Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Read Z. So today we've got the third part in our deep dive into the three act structure. And we're going to be talking about the third and final act, the ending of your book. So what should the third act of your book accomplish? The third act is such an important part of a story. It's the final note, it's where you take everything that you've set up in the first 75% of your book and you actually bring it all together for a conclusion that ideally pays off and is satisfying and maybe even takes the story to new heights that weren't even expected. You know, a great ending of a book can make a story. It can completely reframe what we were expecting. It can leave a huge impression on the reader, but a really weak ending can bring down a whole book and make everything that we've invested in feel, you know, pointless. We ask ourselves, why did I invest in all that for if this was the ending, right? So it's a really important part of the book in terms of the impression that your story leaves on a reader. A great ending is a really important part of a strong story. So what should the third act of of your book accomplish. This is your story's resolution and it's usually approximately the final 25% of your book. Basically it's where everything you set up in the first three quarters of the book pays off. You don't introduce anything new here. This is where you tie off what's already been introduced, ideally in some kind of unexpected or interesting way. So like with the previous two parts, let's start by talking about what the third act should accomplish on a character level. First of all, it's really important to see your protagonist making choices that show that they've been changed on a deep level. You did all that work creating a character arc throughout the middle, now we want to see the results of it. I think one of the keys to a strong final act is that we see the character making choices and that we can see that the choices they make are different than the choices they would have made at the beginning. Or they make choices that reveal key things about them. If we've had core questions we've been asking about this character or core things we've been exploring about them, they'll make choices that give us an answer to those questions. Maybe we've kind of been asking about a character, how far will this character go to get what they want? We know that they'll go far, but we don't know exactly the limits of that. This is where we're gonna see the limits. We're gonna get an answer to that question. And ideally it's both unexpected and satisfying. We also see convergence of the internal and external conflict. If they've been at odds with who they are or what they want internally versus who they are or what they want externally, this is where they have to actually reconcile those things make a sacrifice, choose one or the other. And we want to see these things interact. The, ex the internal conflict will have repercussions on the external conflict. I think the key here is that the story knows what it is saying about the character. The first two acts explore a character, but by the third act we want to sense that the story knows what it is saying about the character and by the end the reader can take that thing away. This is often also shown through your key relationships. Relationships are such an important part of how we access and understand character, so we want to see resolution for those key relationships. How do they end up impacting the character and the story? Bring everything together, all these different relationships and threads, bring them all together. So what about the plot? Now the structure here I would say is actually fairly straightforward. You've set up everything and now it's time to bring it all together. The two most important plot beats to include in the third act Plot beats that you'll see in pretty much every story are the climax and the resolution. Even if you aren't following a specific plot structure, your story probably does have these two beats. So the story's climax is basically the point where the character will either succeed or fail at their external goal. Whatever the core quest, journey, or objective of the story is, this is where we get an answer to it. If there's a core antagonist and the goal has been to defeat them, this is where the character will face off against that antagonist. And then the resolution is what follows. It kind of mirrors the world before the story that we saw in the first act. This is the world after the story. We see how these characters' lives have changed and get an understanding of where they are now. Who are they and where are they after this journey? You probably want to tie up all or most loose ends. It's natural to have some things be ambiguous, but if there's anything that just feels like it's been dropped, find a way to tie it back into the story. There's a difference between purposeful ambiguity and threads that have just been dropped. So try to provide resolution to the things that you promised resolution for. Some levels of ambiguity is fine, but your story should answer the questions that it promised to answer. Any ambiguity should improve upon the story by giving the reader compelling things to chew on so the story kind of lives on beyond its final moment. It shouldn't detract from the story by feeling like the writer just didn't provide answers to questions that they should have provided answers to. You also want to balance payoff with surprise. You want to pay off threads that you promised payoff for, but also introduce some elements of surprise. 
So it's kind of a combination, a balancing act of giving the reader what you promise to give them, but also playing with their expectations in some way. Don't throw in dramatic curveballs just for the sake of throwing the reader off. A lot of the time, an ending that we've anticipated is actually more effective than a complete curveball that wasn't set up properly. But in most cases, some element of surprise is really beneficial to a strong ending, so that it wasn't just something predictable that the reader has kind of known would happen all along. But you want to balance giving the reader what you promised to give them throughout the story, but also introducing something unexpected that really brings that story to new levels. So that's what we're looking for on a plot and structure level. What about on a story level? The story's construction beyond the plot. First of all, we want to see all elements of a story converge, again, maybe in unexpected ways. Different elements and threads all meeting together. Show us how your world building and your character and all your different subplots can meet to create a really compelling conclusion. You also want the thematic arcs to reach a conclusion that is cohesive with the external plot. Whatever you're trying to say thematically about your character or about the ideas in your piece should be echoed and reflected through the story itself. If the themes are contradictory to what actually happens, then your story is actually making the opposite point that you want it to make. Reach a thematic conclusion that is shown and reflected through the story. You also want the ending to be totally in line with the story that came before. A very morose, sad, tragic book probably shouldn't do a tailspin and end on a really light, giggly note. Just as a really light-hearted, sweet book that kind of promises that everything will be okay in the end probably shouldn't end with several tragic character deaths. Keep the ending tonally in line with the story and the character's journey up to this point. And finally, what about a few tips for getting through the third act? First of all, identify the questions you've been asking and answer them. If you're not sure where to take your story's ending, Identify the key questions your story is asking on a plot, character, and thematic level. So if you're asking questions about ideas that are present in your story, maybe things that are not really discussed concretely on the page but are being explored through the story, answer those questions. If you're asking core questions about your character, answer them. If you're asking core questions about the events and how the plot will unfold, answer them. The rest of your story you've been asking questions, now is the time to answer those questions. Resolve as many threads as possible by tying together rather than by tying them off separately. As often as possible, try to resolve different threads by bringing them together. If you resolve a thread just on its own, occasionally this needs to happen, but it doesn't make it feel like a cohesive part of the story's conclusion. As much as you can, bring story's threads together in order to give everything meaning in the ending. And finally, if you're struggling with the third act, in all likelihood these problems were introduced earlier in the story, so go back to the root. The third act can be very difficult to write. I often find it the most difficult to write because it feels like so many things to balance at this point, um, because it can be a little nerve-wracking to actually capitalize on everything you've set up. If you are struggling with the ending, it is probably because those problems were set up earlier in the story. So if you're really struggling, if your ending isn't working, look at your first act, look at the middle. Ask yourself what you've set up and maybe do a round of editing to get all the pieces in place. So that is all for this series. The entire series is linked in the description and in the card if you want to reference earlier parts. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye!